what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to break down the players whose stocks are rising after a fun week nine. What's going on, Jim? Yeah, it really was fun. There were a lot of good performances by players we wanted to use in fantasy. The shootouts we thought would happen did happen. We got a good battle between Kyler Murray and Tua Tunga Vailoa. So I'm in a pretty good mood here on this Monday. How about you, Greg? My mood's great in the New York area. It's just a beautiful last few days being able to get outside. And yesterday, enjoy a fun day of football, predictable football in a good way, where the players that performed were the players that were kind of supposed to perform, which was awesome. The only letdown, well, that was Sunday night football, where at no point was this game close in any way because Drew Brees absolutely dominated. He wound up with 22.7 fan duel points. Tom Brady, I feel like, wound up with zero. So uh, big win there for Drew Brees, whose stock you believe is rising. And I have to imagine a lot of that has to do with the return of Michael Thomas. It does, because in 2020 in fantasy football, Greg, we need quarterbacks with a ceiling. And Drew Brees has not shown that yet, but... Context is super important because we've had Michael Thomas healthy for just two games so far this year. And in both those games, they were facing the Bucs. The Bucs, despite Sunday night, have a very good defense. We have not yet seen a situation where we've had a healthy Saints offense facing a bad defense. And I think that once we get to a situation like that, maybe Drew Brees won't put up like, uh, you know, a Josh Allen type performance. But I think that he can at least come close. And given the salary discount we're now getting on Drew Brees... That's at least enough to make me consider him, whereas Drew Brees, to me at least, outside of single-game slates, has been off the map pretty much the entire year. Drew Brees has been efficient, despite the, the absence of Michael Thomas. That's not always been pretty by any means, but he's still completing passes, still throwing for touchdowns, still leaning on those really good players, and I think that's pretty interesting. So I would say... Keep an eye out on Drew Brees for daily fantasy. If we get him in a situation where he is facing a defense that we do not fear... In a situation where you expect the opposing team to keep pace, I kind of don't hate the idea of actually using Drew Brees in fantasy. Now, again, this is not a player I've wanted to use the entire year outside of single game slates, but now suddenly he's got a healthy offense around him and they're catapulting him to efficient days. So Drew Brees, the stock is up for him. And I think finally we can consider him in daily fantasy on full slates, whereas that hasn't really been the case the entire year, given the absence of Michael Thomas. It's been a weird year for Drew Brees, but I feel like at times we're like, this guy is done, and he has a night like last night where he can just spread the ball around really, really well, find the end zone, and just uh, compete at the highest level, and getting Michael Thomas back certainly makes his job easier. He now has become an option for us on the DFS slate, not just in the single-game format. So Drew Brees, back on the radar in a sneaky kind of way. Also back on the radar after yesterday, it's DJ Chark, who put up 24.1 fan duel points. Where has this been all year, Jim? We, we drafted DJ Chark in season-long leagues. We counted on him early on in the year in DFS. And with Gardner Minshew as quarterback, it hasn't been nearly as consistent. I know Chark has been, been hurt a lot of the year, but finally, DJ Chark is back, baby. Needed a quarterback upgrade. I think that's <laughs> the easy solution here. He really benefited from Jake Luton. And I say that kind of tongue in cheek, but also kind of not because Jake Luton is a very different quarterback than Gardner Minshew. Luton's best trait in college was his deep ball. And Gardner Minshew, although he is efficient on deep balls, doesn't go deep all that often. Luton's a very different guy. He hit Chark on deep balls here. He uh, Chark had 12 total targets in Sunday's game. Five of those were at least 16 yards downfield, and he caught three of those. So three of five deep balls hauled in for Chark for more than 100 yards, and Minshew was not connecting with Chark on those throws. Chark had a good target share, but it didn't matter because Minshew was not connecting with him. Luton did. Now, they get the Packers next week, which means that we'll probably see Chark against Jair Alexander. That's a really scary matchup and not one that I want to actively target, but... If Jake Luton keeps playing for the Jaguars, I don't think it's outrageous to actually upgrade Gardner Min or G.J. Chark going forward because of the type of the passer that he is. The Jaguars are in a loss season. Like, why not give Jake Luton a chance and see what he can do and kind of, you know, you know what you have in Gardner Minshew. See what you've got in Luton. See if he can be potentially a guy to consider. Probably not because he's a six-round pick, but hey, you know, why not roll the dice and see what happens? I think there is a potential for Chark to have big games just like this going forward. Maybe not week 10 against Green Bay, but outside of that, when he gets softer matchups. So if we continue to get Luton as a starter for Jacksonville, I am more inclined to use DJ Chark than I was previously. And I think that's a pretty exciting thing because Chark in DFS relevancy is always a fun option to have. 
Who knew that Minshew Mania could end in, in just such a whimper, right? Jake Luton doing the job yesterday, or almost doing the job, could convert the two-point conversion. From DJ Shark's perspective, he absolutely did enough. Shark finishing the day, as we said, with over 24 FanDuel points, and hopefully more to come in Jacksonville. On Friday, one of the top stacks that we talked about, and specifically game stacks, was Seattle and Buffalo. So Seattle held their end of the bargain, and so did Buffalo. I used Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. You had talked about uh, putting John Brown with Josh Allen. That worked out all right as well. You had John Brown finish with almost 14 Fandle points, and this Buffalo offense just hums in a much easier fashion when Brown is in the lineup and healthy, and that's where we're, where we are at right now. Buffalo's kind of gone through the ringer with the schedule, and they, it had some issues with COVID and injuries. Yesterday, they faced a very soft defense, and they took advantage, and hopefully that's what the future holds as well. Yeah, Stephon Diggs is still the top option here by a wide margin. Stephon Diggs is amazing. We should love him for DFS, but it's nice to have a second piece in this offense in games where we want to stack Josh Allen. And John Brown showed on Sunday he can be that piece for us. He had 11 total targets. Two of those were deep, and he got fed. It was a variety. Like a, There was a lot, of, um, a lot of versatility in the targets that he got. He got some screens, some short passes, but also the long balls, which is why we want to go to John Brown in the first place. So I thought it was a really interesting game from a usage perspective, but also not surprising because John Brown is healthy once again. He has not been healthy most of the year. If we look at the games where he has been healthy, John Brown has 20% of the Bills' overall targets and 23% of the deep targets. That's kind of like Brandon Cook's type usage, and I say that in a positive way because I like Brandon Cook's quite a bit, and I think that John Brown is a good analog because he's not the top piece in his offense. It's Will Fuller in that scenario, but he's a piece we can use when we like the offense, and we're probably going to like the offense again in Week 10 against Arizona. Stephon Diggs seeing Patrick Peterson potentially there. That could be a good spot for John Brown in a revenge game, mind you, against the Arizona Cardinals. So it's always nice to have two options we can go to when stacking a team. Obviously, Stephon Diggs is the number one option. That does not change. But we now have the second route we can go if we want to save some salary. John Brown still in the 5,000 range for week 10. And I'm going to use him there because he brings salary relief on a slate where we won't need it. So John Brown's stock is up and he is back in play when we want to use Josh Allen. John Brown's stock rising, a revenge game. What else can you ask for? Well, that's how to be the number one option. But he's really good in this number two role. Miss Cash last year and now uh, really putting out performance after performance when he is healthy. Josh Allen also improving with Stephon Diggs in the lineup. This Buffalo team, hopefully, they will hope to get back to their early season ways. And if yesterday was any indication, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, this has been fun. I like having fun on here. So uh, let's continue to do it on Friday. Let's just keep it rolling for the rest of 2020, Greg. Why stop now? Let's just keep it, uh, the good vibes rolling and finish out this football season on a high note. Without question, and I know we're going to talk about it on Wednesday with Davis, but it is Masters Week, Jim. I have to throw it back at you. Give us a Masters pick that could wear the green jacket on Sunday. I want to have some fun. I don't want to go with, like, Bryson or, or DJ because I would like DJ because I have a ticket from, like, March or whatever that's uh, been sitting here for a long time. But if I want to have some fun, give me Patrick Cantlay, well-rounded golfer, can do pretty much everything, got a little bit of distance, got the good putting. You know Patrick Cantlay from our discussions on the Hurry Up back in the day. We're going to go right back to Cantlay this week. So uh, from a DFS perspective, I think that Cantlay is really interesting for the Masters this week. And spoiler alert, Patrick Cantlay is Davis Maddox's favorite bet as well <laughs> over at the Masters. You'll hear more about that on Wednesday. For Jim Zonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the Jets and the Patriots tonight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.